In this section, we'll look at how to multiply or how to add and subtract fractions. In order to add and subtract fractions, you have to have a common denominator. Remember that bottom number represents the size of the pieces. Your pieces have to be the same size in order to add or subtract them. So like in example one, we have five elevenths plus four elevenths. Well, those are both elevenths, so we can just add the number of pieces. The it's like those are shaded. So we have five pieces that are shaded and four pieces are shaded. That gives us nine shaded pieces because they're all elevenths or nine elevenths. This problem they want us to put two ninths in for x and four ninths in for y. So we'll start with our parentheses and then we have an x which is two ninths. Then we have the minus and then we have the y, which is 4 ninths, and then we have the parentheses and the squared. So we'll start inside, because the order of operations tells us to. So 2 ninths minus 4 ninths. The ninths are the same, so we can just do 2 minus 4, which is a negative 2, and it's still ninths. So now we have negative 2 ninths squared. Remember that means negative 2 ninths times negative 2 ninths. So we just multiply across, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, 9 times 9 is 81, and it is a negative times a negative, so we should have a positive, and we get 4 over 81. This is a, a prob an equation. It works the same way, though. We have plus 3 fourths, so we want to minus 3 fourths on both sides. That leaves us with an x over here. On the right, we have negative 5 fourths minus 3 fourths. Now, those have common denominators, so our answer is still going to have a 4. And then we just deal with the top. Negative 5 minus 3 is a negative 8. So we have negative 8 fourths. And that we can reduce. Negative 8 divided by 4. Fractions still just mean division also. So this is really negative 8 divided by 4 is a negative 2. Or we could think of this negative 8 over 4 as reducing it like we were doing before. Divide both by 4 and we get negative 2 over 1 which is also negative 2. Now if the denominators are different we have to make them be the same. To find a common denominator we use the LCD, least common denominator. This is the same as the least common multiple that we did in module one. So you can look back at page 17 if you need a reminder about how to do that. So in this problem we have three fourths and five sixths. So we want to look at the four and the six to find the least common denominator. So we'll find the prime factorization of four that's 2 times 2. And we'll find the prime factorization of 6, which is 2 times 3. Remember, we look for what's common, and we write what's common one time, and then we also write everything else that's left. So the LCD is 2 times 2, which is 4 times 3, which is 12. So in this problem, we want to do the same thing. We have 11 twelfths minus 18, 11 eighteenths. Our denominators are not the same, so we have to look at 12 and we have to look at 18. So we'll find the prime factorization of 12. So 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And we'll find the prime factorization of 18. 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. We look for what's in common. We write what's in common once. And then we also have to write the things that are left. Times 2 times 3. So we get this LCD 
We multiply these numbers together. 2 times 3 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 3 is 36. So we know our LCD is 36. So hang on just a second, let me make some more room. Okay, if our LCD is 36, then we need to rewrite these two fractions with a denominator of 36. Now we did this earlier as well. So we ask ourselves, 12 times what is 36? And that's 3, so we multiply the top and the bottom by 3. So our first fraction becomes 33 over 36. Then we do the same thing with the 11 over 18. We need this to be a 36 in the bottom. So we ask ourselves, what do we multiply by? And the answer is 2. So we get 22 over 36 for our second fraction. And now that the denominators match, we can just subtract 33 minus 22 is 11 over 36. So let's look at this problem now. This problem wants us to put in um, 4 ninths in place of x and 1 over 21 in place of y. So we'll write 3 times 4 ninths plus 1 over 21. Now we haven't talked about how to do this in our calculators yet, so this is a be this would be a great place to do that. We'll use our calculators to find this answer. So on your calculator, if you have a TI-30 or a scientific calculator, there's usually a button that looks like this. And I call that our fraction button. So here's the way we use it. We're going to type 3 into our calculator and then times. And then we start at the top of the fraction, we'll do 4, and then we'll do that fraction button, and then the 9. So it's the top of the fraction, and then the fraction button, and then the 9, plus the top of the fraction, 1, and then the fraction button, and then 21, and then your enter button. And that should give you the answer. So your fraction may have, or your calculator may have given you something that looked like this, or something that looked like this. So we have to learn how to read that. This first one means 1 and 8, 21. The second one just means 29 over 21. So this is telling you the top and the bottom of a fraction. This is telling you there's a number in front of that fraction. So this is probably, um, in, so far right now, we don't want to enter problems as in this format. We want it to be an improper fraction like this. So also in your calculator, probably above this fraction button is something that may look like A, B, C, and then maybe an arrow or something something like that and it's like I said it's usually written above that fraction button this is a second button function so if you hit second and then this button it'll change it this answer to this answer and this is how we want to enter it if your calculator doesn't work quite like that then talk to your teacher your teacher can help you figure out how or help show you how to enter this problem into your calculator and how to make it come up with this answer. So let's look at this. This is solving an equation. And we again, it's the same process. We want to add 9 fourteenths to both sides. So we get n by itself on the left. Now on the right we have this negative 6 fourths, sorry, not fourteenths, negative six fourths plus nine fourteenths. Not a common denominator, so we need to, to um, find this sum. So we can do that in our calculators. Again, we're going to type negative six, remember that negative is usually in a separate button, the fraction button, and then the four, plus nine, and then the fraction button, and then the 14, and then enter. 
So let me do that. And we get negative six sevenths is our answer. And again, what we're really doing is get a common, getting a common denominator here. Our common denominator would be 28, which means I would need to multiply this one by 7. And I would get negative 42 over 28. And I'd multiply this one by 2 plus 18 over 28. And negative 42 plus 18 is negative 24 over 28 and then I would need to reduce that divide by 4 divide by 4 and that's what gives me this negative 6 sevenths from my calculator let's look at one more in this problem we have an X on top now that doesn't change a whole lot we still need to, let's pretend first of all that the problem is just 9 over 49 plus 9 over 21. We can find that in our calculator. We've been doing that a couple times now. So you're going to do 9 fraction button 49 plus 9 fraction button 21. And your calculator tells us it's 30 over 49. Now this had an X and this had an X, which means they were like terms, so we could add them together, but it also means our answer has an X. So the only difference between this problem and this problem is that we need to put the X on top beside the 30 because both those 9's had X's to begin with.